Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a polynomial equation in two variables. We have x squared plus y squared equals x minus 1 fourth. I'm going to be solving for x and y values. x and y are real numbers, so this is not a Diophantine equation where we look for integer or rational solutions. So I'll be presenting two methods, even though the methods are fairly similar, they could still be considered, in my opinion, two different methods. And you'll get to decide. So first method. So for my first method, I'm going to go ahead and write this equation as a quadratic in x. And the reason for that is I have x squared and x in my equation, so it's better if you write it as a quadratic in x instead of y. So let's go ahead and put everything on the same side. And now this is a quadratic in x, right? And obviously I'm going to show you a graph as well. But let's go ahead and do this first. So to be able to write this uh, as a quadratic, we already have the coefficient of x squared being 1 and the coefficient of x is negative 1. And this part is going to be our constant. Okay? So it's kind of like ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0. Make sense? a is 1. Now we can solve this equation by using the quadratic formula. Let's go ahead and use quadratic formula, negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is 1, minus 4ac, 4 times a is 1, so it's going to be y squared plus 1 fourth. And then we're going to divide it by 2. Let's go ahead and distribute the 1, uh, I mean the 4, and let's simplify this a little bit. 1 plus minus the square root of we get 1 minus 4y squared minus 1. So that may not look uh, meaningful to you, but let's go ahead and write the 4y squared first. Negative 4y squared. And then plus 1 minus 1. So it's just going to cancel out, right? Wow, that's interesting. So what does that mean? <laughs> well, this kind of means that our discriminant is negative 4y squared. And remember, in order to get real solutions, and we're looking for real solutions, the discriminant needs to be non-negative. So, in other words, negative 4y squared needs to be greater than or equal to 0. But if you multiply both sides by negative 1, this implies, actually, divide by negative 4 probably is better. y squared implies, uh, y squared is going to be less than or equal to 0. This is impossible unless y is equal to 0, because, as you know, no square is negative. So, this implies y equals 0. Hmm, that's kind of interesting, right? Well, if y equals 0, then we can go ahead and plug in and find the value of x. But before that, let's go ahead and take a look at the graph real quick. So I graphed this relation for you, and you're like, where is the graph? <laughs> there is no graph. Okay, there's no graph because there's nothing to graph. Uh, this is actually going to be something, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Let's go ahead and finish up the problem. So Desmos doesn't show any graphs. Does that mean there are no solutions? But we already got something for y, and y equals 0 is going to probably imply something for x. Well, you can actually go ahead and plug in y equals 0 here. That's the easiest way to find x. That's going to give you x equals 1 half. And what does that mean? It just means the solution is a single point. Unfortunately, Desmos does not show that. So 1 half comma 0. It's just going to be a point like this, and that's what the graph is all about. Make sense? Okay, that's why you don't see any graphs. It just doesn't graph it because it's a single point. So let's go ahead and take a look at the second method. So the first method takes advantage of the quadratic formula. The second method will be slightly different, but guess what? We're going to arrive at the same thing pretty much at the end. Because what else can you do, right? If you know of a third method that is entirely different, and doesn't use any of these ideas, please let me know. I'm curious. Okay, great. So now let's go ahead and do the following. And I think this is something that I mentioned before. I probably brought it up in previous videos. Anytime you see something like x squared plus x or x squared minus x, do you remember what I told you? Multiply by 4. Multiply by 4. Why? Because that's going to help. Most of the time, 99.9999% of the time, it's going to help. So let's go ahead and multiply both sides by 4. 
and that's gonna give us the following 4x squared plus 4y squared equals 4x minus 1 awesome but we'll make it awesomer by putting everything on the same side let's go ahead and subtract 4x minus 1 so this becomes 4x squared minus 4x plus 1 plus 4y squared equals 0 and from here we're gonna do Hocus Pocus, Abra Kadabra, using our magical mathematical powers, we're going to write this as a sum of perfect squares. And that's going to be perfect. This is 2x minus 1 quantity squared. And this is 2y quantity squared. And that is equal to 0. Hmm. Now you're thinking, what is that supposed to mean? It just means that we have a squared plus b squared equals 0 for a and b real numbers that's our special r what does this imply this implies a zero and i should probably make it a big and b equals zero makes sense this is a very important property of real numbers obviously if a and b are allowed to be complex numbers this is not necessarily true right because you can safely say that hey one squared plus i squared is zero but i does and i and 1 are not equal to 0 because i is not real, right? Well, can we say it doesn't exist? Uh, let's just say it's not real. Okay, <laughs> whatever, that, whatever that means. So we got this equation and then we're just going to get the solutions from here, right? Easily. Yes, exactly. So you're going to set each, I was about to say factor, but that's not the case, each term equal to 0. So 2x, let me copy that here. I think it was like this. By the way, you may be wondering like how I came up with a problem like this or someone else. Well, start with this and then go backwards. You're going to come up with a problem. That's how usually uh, people come up with problems. A lot of times like, how do you come up with problems? It, this is how we can do it. Make up an equation and make it uh, make the sum equal to zero. I'll show you a little bit. Anyways, let's finish this up. I talked too much. 2x minus 1 is equal to zero. And from here, I get 2x equals 1 and x equals one half yay and from here we get y equals zero let me just go down here y equals zero and that gives us the only real solution pair to this equation so i was just telling you like how you come up with equations like this easy you can just go and you know what when you use fractions actually it's more fun so you can do something like this x minus three halves squared plus y minus one half squared plus 2x minus y minus z squared equals 0. Expand it, multiply both sides by 4, or just leave it like that, and you're going to get a nice, nice equation. And one of the things that's really cool about these kinds of questions is you're going to get x squared from here and 4x squared from here. When they're added, it's going to give you 5x squared. So it's going to be really hard for someone else to comprehend, like, hey, what is going on? What am I going to do with 5x squared? You're supposed to split it up. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.